and go. Great. OK, good afternoon, everybody. You're all very welcome to the University of Limerick. I hope you've been able to attend some of our faculty programme talks earlier today or indeed that you could do so tomorrow. So my name is Rona McCormack and I'm the Mature Student Officer for UL and I am chairing this session this afternoon. So this talk will take about 30 minutes with some time for Q&A afterwards. It is an important talk as between myself and my colleagues, we're going to explain some of the alternative pathways that are available to students to access undergraduate study at UL, other than through the regular Leaving Cert points route. So this is the most recognised pathway to higher education, but just to say it is far from the only one. So it is unfortunate we can't be on campus as usual for these open days to meet and speak with you in person. However, this session will showcase the minimum relevant information you need on these alternative pathways and also so that you can know who to contact afterwards with specific questions that you might have, because some of us are actually going to be running some more detailed talks in a few weeks time. So, for example, on the DARE entry route and indeed on mature student entry. So you can sign up to our mailing lists to receive information on these talks and the contact detail for those lists will be on our slides today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, and this is a recorded session. So this is by Laura Maloney, who is our undergraduate recruitment and admissions officer, and she's going to give an introduction to the general admissions criteria for the University of Limerick. Hi, my name is Laura Maloney. I'm the undergraduate recruitment and admissions officer at the University of Limerick. This presentation is going to cover entry requirements for leaving certificate, the EU entry requirements and second language exemptions. The entry requirements for the university require that you have four components. You need six recognised leaving certificate exam subjects, including a minimum of two H5s and four ordinary six H7 grades. Those grades must be comprised of English, maths and a second language. You also may require course specific entry requirements. And the final element are the CAO points. Course specific entry requirements are included for courses where you will need a higher grade in specific subjects. Some courses require higher grades in English, maths, science or a second language. More information on course specific entry requirements can be found on www.ul.ie slash courses. For EU applicants, you have to apply through the CAO. The application can be found on www.cao.ie. In Ireland, we use a joint assessment with the other higher education institutions for conversion of recognised EU leaving certificate equivalent qualifications are converted to the Irish system. Conversion of specific grades as well as a conversion of award to points is conducted for each country outlined in the joint assessment document available on the CAO website. You must meet the entry requirements for the university as well as the course specific entry requirements, along with the points to be considered for entry. Places are issued on a competitive basis to all qualifying EU applicants. English language competency is also required. Further information on country specific entry requirements can be found in this link. For EU entry requirements, you need to supply documentation. You will need to supply cert a certified true copy of official transcripts of academic results. In some cases, the final school report is also required to show the full range of subjects taken. A certified English translation is required in the case of qualifications not issued originally in English or Irish in addition to the certified A4 photocopies of the documents themselves. The documents must be submitted to the CAO. The deadlines are 
that any qualifications that have already been completed should arrive in the CAO within 10 days of your submission of your online application. For anyone completing their final exams in 2021, results should be forwarded as soon as they issue. These results must arrive in the CAO at least 10 days before the issue of round one offers. It may not be possible to gain entry in the current year if documents and or results are presented later than the date stated above. Language exemptions can be applied for based on the Department of Education and Skills rules outlined in their document exemption from the study of Irish guidelines for post-primary schools. You can apply online using UL's form. You must include a signed stamped form with your online application. This form can be scanned or photographed and attached to the UL online application exemption. We also hold a special maths exam for science and engineering students between round one offers and round two offers. It is for higher level maths only and it is only relevant if you meet all other course specific entry requirements. There are also a number of QQI pathways which my colleagues will discuss with you in another presentation. Further information can be found on our website. You can follow us on any of our social media platforms media platforms to stay up to date for information on UL. Great, we're going to hand over straight to Edel O'Donnell now. Um, Edel works in the Access Office in UL and Edel will introduce the Higher Education Access Route as well as the Access to University course. Adele. Thanks, Rona. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Higher Education Access Route. Um, the Higher Education Access Route is an access route that is run by the CAO. Um, it is for students who are under 23 by the 1st of January 2021. Um, if we go to the next slide, you can see some of the. How you apply for the scheme. So again, this scheme is administered through the CAO. Applications open on the 5th of November 2020. It's a college and university scheme that offers points on reduced offers places, sorry, on reduced points. Um, how the reduced points work are depend on a number of factors. So that is the number of reserved here spaces in that course, the number of here eligible uh, applicants that are competing for a place and the overall number of spaces on the course. If you are offered a place in the University of Limerick uh, through here, you must attend um, a special orientation, which is the transition to university course. Information the transition to university course can be found on our website. Again, if you are offered a place through here, you can access um, extra resources such as mentoring, extra tuition, and you can also get some extra financial help through scholarships and bursaries. It is important to note that applications must be made through the CAO. Applications open on the 5th of November 2020. Um, you can apply up until February 1st, 2021. You must complete all elements of the online here application fully through the CAO. Once you've submitted your CAO application and indicated that you want to apply for here and that you've uh, completed all parts of that application, a checklist will appear on the screen and this will tell you what documentation you must provide. Again, you must post your supporting documentation by registered post to arrive in the CAO no later than 
quarter past five, March 15th, 2021. At the bottom of this page there is a PDF version to the 2021 here handbook. And that will go into kind of an in-depth um, detail of what it is that you need to make your application. So on our next slide, we will look at the Access to University course. So the Access to University course is a full time 13 week program that is offered by the University of Limerick. Um, again, it is for people who come from socioeconomic backgrounds that are underrepresented in higher education. There is no fee for this course and the Access Office will in fact provide you with some financial help if you were offered a place on the Access to University course. Again, it's highly modelled on the same criteria as the HEAR scheme that's offered through the CA. Applicants must meet the university's minimum entry requirements, which is two H5s, four O6s or H7s to be considered for a place. Again, if you're doing, uh, if you apply for a space on an engineering course and you're required to have um, an O3 in maths, you must already have this obtained in order to be offered a place. Again, you can find out more information um, on the here eligibility by following the following link, which is the Access College website. And again, just to note that applications for our Access to University course are currently opened for 2021. You can find out more again by following the link below and applicant applications must be returned by email to access at ul.ie by Friday the 6th of November 2020. Again if you have any further questions we'll be able to take them at the Q&A at the end and on the next slide you will see our contact details as well so that's my own email address edel.odonnell at ul.ie Again, you can contact us at access at ul.ie or on the following phone number. And again, we will be running uh, certain information sessions, workshops and pre-entry uh, support programs. So if you'd like to sign up to our mailing list, again, give us, send us an email at access at ul.ie. That's great, Adele. Thanks very much. And I think that we have, if anyone has questions, if you don't mind, we'll hold them until all speakers are finished, if that's OK. I can see that one has come in through the Q&A button already um, or the Q&A um, facility, but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to those at the end, if that's all right. So now I'd just like to hand straight over to Kayleen Kennedy and Kayleen is works in the Disability Support Services Office and she'll talk about the disability access route to education. That's DARE. And you might turn on your mic, Kayleen. That might be a good idea. Um, thanks, Rona. Uh, thanks, Mindy and Rona. Stephen, you can actually move that on just one slide if that's okay, thanks. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kayleen Kennedy, and as Rona said, I'm the Student Support Officer for Students with Disabilities um, here at the University of Limerick. Um, I'm also the DARE representative for UL, and I deal with all DARE applicant queries. So if you are making a DARE application and you have any queries, around that application that you're unsure of, um, you can drop me an email at any time and my contact details will be up um, in the final slide. Um, so today, usually the DARE and HEAR talks um, are usually take about 45 minutes to an hour. Today, we only have five minutes. So what I'm going to go through is just what DARE is, um, who should apply and how you can make that application. And as Rona mentioned earlier, we will be running um, kind of full sessions later on um, in November. So you can sign up for those um, and I can go through the whole process with you or you can send me an email if you have specific questions. So DARE is the Disability Access Route to Education. And it's a third level admission scheme for school leavers whose disabilities have had a negative impact on their second level education. And DARE, just like here, offers reduced points places to school leavers who, as a result of having a disability, have experienced additional educational challenges in second level education. So it's very similar to here in that it works off a quota. So there are a certain number of DARE places on each course um, available just to DARE applicants and 
on very small courses. On average, there's about 5% of places on each course in UL, um, but this can change slightly depending on the course. So for example, on very small courses, there may only be one or two places available for DARE applicants. On very large courses, there could be 20 places available for DARE applicants. Um, so it really just depends on the course, and it also depends on how many other DARE applicants are are applying, how many places there are, and what points um, those applicants got. So it's still a competitive process, so just be aware of that. It still works very similar to the general CAO application. So anybody uh, with a disability can apply through DARE, and you have to provide different documentation. So Stephen, if you would just move on to the next slide, that would be great. Thank you. So there are three sections to DARE. So there is section A, section B and section C. For section A, that's just filled out online through the CAO. The deadline for that is the 1st of March 2020. 2021 now, sorry. Uh, so that's the 1st of March 2021. Um, so that's just section A. It just asks you five questions. Um, all you have to do is fill it out. They're basically yes, no questions with a small piece that um, is for a personal statement. So it's really important that that piece is completed, even though it should only take you about 10 minutes. If you don't do it, uh, you actually can't send section B and section C. So just be aware of that. Section A is the first part of the DARE application. Um, and it's done online through the CAO. Section B is your educational impact statement, and that is provided for your, for that's provided by your school. So your school would fill out section B. Many schools will print out the form for you and fill it out and you sign it. Um, other schools, you may have to fill out, you may have to print out the form yourself, bring it to your guidance counselor or a teacher or somebody that you work work closely with in the school um, and they will fill it out for you. That form must be signed by the principal um, and it must also be stamped by the school. So it's very important that if your school um, maybe isn't aware that you're applying to DARE or if your school isn't very used to making DARE applications that you are proactive around that. Now I would recommend to every student to take responsibility for that form. It's not your guidance counsellor's responsibility, it's not your teacher's responsibility, it's your responsibility. So I often recommend to students that they just print out the form, fill out the first PID with their name and CAO number and bring it to their guidance counsellor or teacher and work with them on that. The deadline for that is the 15th of March 2021 and that has to be po posted to the CAO. It's not done online, it has to be posted to the CAO. And then the final section of DARE is section C and that's your evidence of disability form and that has to be um, completed by the appropriate professional and that also has to be posted to the CAO by the 15th of March. So it's really important that you are aware both section B and section C do not happen online. They have to be posted to the CAO. Now, the appropriate professional will change, change based on um, category of disability. So for example, if you are applying under mental health, uh, mental health condition, um, you must provide documentation from a psychiatrist. You cannot provide documentation from a uh, counselor, uh, from a GP, or from a psychologist. It must come from a psychiatrist. Um, if you are providing documentation um, for maybe dyslexia, that must come from an educational psychologist, and then your school will also provide up-to-date attainment scores. So it does differ depending on category of disability, and it's really important that you are aware of that. The best website to find out that information is called accesscollege.ie, and if you go on that website and you just click on DARE, um, and then you just click on the category under which you would like to apply, it will tell you all of the relevant information. And if you are unsure of what which category you should apply under, just send me an email and I can certainly help you with that. And I can also just help you if you're unsure in terms of what documentation you need and what documentation you have at home. So there, just to kind of finish, there are three sections to DARE, section A, section B and section C. Section A is completed online by the 1st of March. Section B and C must be completed and sent to the CAO by post by the 15th of March. Um, Stephen, if you would just move on one more slide there. Thank you. So um, 
my contact details are here, kayling.kennedy at ul.ie. Um, and if you email me, I can let you know when the upcoming talks are happening. They will be happening in late November. You can also email dare at ul.ie if that's a little bit easier. Um, and then my phone number is 061-234-847. Just to let you know, I only check the DARE um, email once a week. I check my own personal email every single day. So if you send it to the DARE at ul.ie email, please give me a few days just to get back to you. I can see there are a number of questions coming in. Um, I think some of them are relating to DARE, so I will uh, talk about those at the end. Thank you. That's great, Kayleen. Thanks very much. Yeah, and I can see those questions coming in on DARE as well. And it's quite a detailed process that, that requires, I think, time to, to respond to many um, queries on it. So uh, I'm sure Kayleen will answer some of those questions as best she can, but you may well be um, better, you might be better off just to, to email dare at ul.e or email Kayleen directly, as she said, with, with specific questions. So look, I'm going to hand straight over now to Dr. Stephen Ryan from Academic Registry, and Stephen is going to explain how the advanced entry route works to UL. Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, so just to bring you through uh, the advanced entry routes into the University of Limerick. The transfer route into UL very much depends on the content overlap of your new and old course. So if you're coming from a course, um, be it a level six, level seven, or a level eight course, it must be a related course in order for you to advance um, in a transfer. It also depends on competition for places on the new course in the year you apply. So there is only a limited amount of places in each of the university's courses. So if there's more competition than there is places, um, it may not happen that you will be offered a transfer. Uh, while most courses accept transfers, some don't. Psychology and psychology and sociology do not accept transfers. Um, before you submit an application, you should discuss your options with the head of the school or department you are applying to transfer into. Ultimately, they will be uh, the ones that will make the decision and they will be most aware of um, of whether or not this can happen. So it can save you a lot of time even on your application as to whether or not you uh, would be successful if you discuss it with the head of department or school. Uh, transfers are judged on an individual basis and there are considerable variables involved. So it's transferring should not be, um, it's an option that's open to you, but it shouldn't be something that you uh, put that you definitely go into another course saying, oh, then I'll transfer across because it may not happen. There may not be space and there are too many variables at stake. So who can transfer? You can transfer from um, a with a level six major award, um, QQI higher education training, higher certificate or QQI further education training, advanced certificate. If you have it at credit merit or distinction level in a compatible course, um, you will normally be, uh, be considered for entry to year two of uh, a four year course. If you have a QQI higher education um, training bachelor ordinary degree level seven major award, a credit merit or distinction level uh, in a compatible course, you would normally be considered for entry to year three of a four year course. Normally when you are transitioning um, into a course, you would follow the regular study of classes. However, there are exceptions in a number of engineering and science degrees um, where they include a specially designed transition course, uh, which allow which is provided for students transferring into third year of those de degree courses. Uh, students usually spend one semester uh, on this and then proceed through the regular course with existing uh, with the existing third year students. If you're transferring from uh, a, from a level eight course, um, you must have one year of study done and you would be eligible to apply to, uh, if you have done in a compatible course, you would be eligible to 
apply um, to transfer into year two of what a University of Limerick or Mary I course, um, and you'd be considered uh, you'd be considered if you have uh, that full year done. The application closing date is the first of July in each academic year, so it'll be the first of July next summer for uh, for starting that September. Uh, and late applications are taken on a case by case basis. Um, places again must be available in the year in question of the new course of study. Uh, you must have the relevant subject requirements or requirements through an equivalent pathway mature stu uh, if you're a mature student or if you're coming in with a QQI level five uh, award. And you must have had the minimum CAO cutoff points on the year that you entered the, um, the HEI. And if you don't have the CAO points, you can also be considered if you have 60 credits and achieved at least 50% and honours 2.2 level with no deficient grades in study, in the programme of study that you were in. Um, but it is very important again, just that there is compatibility uh, in terms of the learning outcomes between the course you're coming from and the course you're going into. And again, this is gauged by the head of school uh, in the, the school that you would be transferring into. And if there are more applicants than places available, these will be based on your academic qualifications uh, and academic performance. If you want recognition in prior learning, uh, the university is very cognizant of the need to ensure that all of its awards, the integrity of these awards are rigor rigorously guarded and that academic standards are maintained, uh, but they do offer recognition of prior learning and you can apply and um, there are a number of ways of applying. You can be, these can be based on participation in the, in exactly the same form of assessment as other students entering or uh, that are already on a program of study through a portfolio, a demonstrated skill or competence, reflective papers or journal articles that relate to previous learning to the stated learning outcomes of the program or module in question, evidence from the workplace or another setting where a student has applied their learning or competence and testimonial in learning or competence. Um, now, the university will offer assistance in 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 providing you with information as to what exactly it is that you would need uh, to provide in terms of information, and they they will offer guidance as well on this process if you do want to apply for recognition of prior learning. If you want to find out more about um, what I've just been mentioning, uh, there will be links uh, on the next page, um, but just. If you are putting in your application, your application must include an application form with relevant sections fully completed. Uh, you must list the details of your current, past, third, uh, third level studies in the application form and full documentation, including course syllabus and certified transcripts must be handed in from, uh, from the institution you are transferring into the university from. Again, if you want to find out more information on transfers, uh, you can follow that link down at the bottom or if you want to contact us, um, the information is there. Uh, you can contact us through filling out the form at academic registry forward slash about forward slash contact us or find out more information on our web page there, the first link on that. Um, so by all means, if you do have any questions, uh, pop them into the box and hopefully we will be able to come back and answer them at the end. So I'll hand you back to Rona. Thank you. Thanks very much, Stephen. Uh, so I'm going to cover the next two sections now and I'll, I'll keep them brief. Um, I'm going to cover QQI entry to UL and mature student entry to UL as well. So firstly, with regard to QQI entry pathways to the University of Limerick at the moment, we have, if you can just move on one slide, Stephen, that'd be great. We have entry pathways available to 15 undergraduate degree programmes in UL 
for students who have achieved a relevant QQI, and these will be awards formerly known as VTAC awards. So a relevant QQI award at level five or level six. So these would typically be awards that are programs that are offered by further education colleges, adult education centers, and indeed some community organizations as well. And they're an excellent way of preparing for third level education as well. And, and typically, I suppose these, these programs, QQI programs would, um, have a mix of students on them, both younger students and adult learners as well. So that, that pathway is open to everybody regardless of age. Typically what's needed is a full QQI award and that would involve eight component or what we call minor awards. So in other words, you need to present a minimum credit value of 120 credits with at least five distinctions in your award. Now you can see on the right hand side of the slide there that there are the 15 programs that in Inuel are currently have recognized QQI entry pathways. And um, most of those programs do specify particular major awards that they require or that they recognize as an entry pathway. So in other words, it's, it's a specified award or a specified program. Three of those programs that we've listed there will recognize any QQI level five or six award. And those three programs are arts, social sciences and performing arts. So it doesn't matter what QQI award you've gained, as long as you present a minimum five distinctions, your QQI award can be recognized for entry to, to those programs in UL. Now it is it can be um, quite it can be competitive because there are a limited number of places obviously available for QQI entrance to those programs. And if you look at the link on the left hand side of the slide, um, that link there on the academic registry website will give a lot more detail as to what what exactly are the linked uh, pathways or the linked programs to each of our degree courses in UL, how they are scored or how your QQI award is scored and how many available places um, are, are how many places are available on each of our degree courses for QQI entrance. The process is the same as it is for a Leaving Cert applicant or indeed for a mature student applicant. You have to apply through the CAO by the 1st of February and offers of places to QQI applicants are typically issued in early August each year. So again, you can see our linked programs there on the right hand side of the slide, but just to emphasize as well that UL is continuing actively to work on increasing the number of it, our programs which recognize QQI awards for entry. Um, so it's not just increasing the number of programs, but it's also, I suppose, streamlining and simplifying pathways um, that will be recognized um, or awards that will be recognized as entry pathways from QQI programs to our to our degree courses. So that is an active piece of work that's happening in UL at the moment. Um, so that kind of summarizes the, the QQI entry to UL and I would uh, recommend that you do have a look at the academic registry web website for more detail. So if we move on then to mature student entry to UL, if you don't mind, thanks very much, Stephen. Um, so I suppose this is is my baby, if you like, being the mature student officer in UL. Um, so a mature student is anybody who is 23 years or older on the 1st of January in their year of entry to a full time undergraduate program. Um, and I suppose the key thing to say about applying as a mature student applicant is that you're, you're, you're being assessed on, on yourself as an individual, as a person. So you're being considered for your place based on your work and your life experience, as well as your prior education. So in other words, you're not presenting leaving cert points. It's not purely based on either a QQI award or a leaving certificate. You're, in order to be assessed as a mature student applicant, uh, course directors will, will look at your, your background, they look at your motivation, your commitment, they look at, you know, what kind of work and life experience you've had up to now and 